Hello and welcome to a new video. I would like to thank you all for expressing your opinions regarding he, she and it. And we have a new kid on the block called Fat Fritz. Now, some of you may remember Deus Ex. It was the first neural network to participate alongside Leela in the Top Computer Chess Championship. And even though it wasn't quite as strong as Leela at that time, it had some really, really great results. Now, after the season ended, TCC revised their rules regarding which engines can uh, participate in their uh, competitions and Deus Ex was disallowed from future seasons of TCC because it was using Leela's engine the same way as Lilenstein and the Dark Queen uses Leela's engine. And now Albert Silver, the creator of Deus Ex, together with Chessbase, released a stronger engine called Fat Fritz, which is trained not only on existing computer games and human games, but it was trained also using reinforcement learning, the same process that is used in Leela's training. So Fat Fritz plays against itself and becomes stronger and stronger. And some really exciting news appeared on Chessbase, like this one, where grandmasters uh, were really, really happy with uh, Fat Fritz's uh, play. And uh, also this one, and I was really excited because uh, Fat Fritz defeated Stockfish in a 100 game match. Wow, uh, this looked really serious. Is this uh, Alpha Zero raised from the dead and uh, in the body of Fat Fritz coming back 100 times stronger? I was really excited and I was curious how it does against Leela, for example. And then the guys over at uh, chess.com organized two matches against Stockfish and uh, Leela using their hardware. And here are the results. Stockfish won the match against Fat Fritz, 56 to 46, so a plus 10 performance. But this is a very, very good performance for Fat Fritz, considering how strong Stockfish is. But this is definitely not the second coming of Alpha Zero. Nevertheless, Fat Fritz managed to, to win some, uh, some nice games against Stockfish. And here are now the results against Leela. Pretty much the same result. So Lila proves to be stronger. And then I looked at the games that Fat Fritz managed to win. And I saw that um, they are pretty much wins in, in openings where he didn't manage to at least hold the reverse game. So these openings are probably unbalanced. There is, however, one game towards the end of the second row that Fat Fritz managed to win cleanly. Uh, what I mean by cleanly is that he, he managed to at least hold the reverse game and I was really hoping that uh, Fat Fritz managed to outplay Leela here but unfortunately it wasn't the case. In this game at move 149 uh, Fat Fritz with white is attacking the spawn on a6 and is threatening to take it but actually they both agree that Leela with black uh, has at least a draw here. Uh, the position is actually a bit better for Leela. And here Lila can save the game by sacking the bishop for this pawn. And now if the pawn takes play b3. And this pawn is threatening to go in. So Fat Fritz really has to, to come back with the bishop and then stop that pawn. And after e5, pawn takes, pawn takes, b2 and bishop f5. This pawn is now stopped. But Fat Fritz cannot really make progress here because he has to stop both of these pawns so the king has to babysit the f3 pawn and the bishop the b2 pawn and Lila of course being a piece down can't hope for more than a draw either but instead of this game heading to a draw instead of bishop takes on c4 Lila inexplicably blundered here with bishop g6 allowing f5 and then after bishop f7 fat fritz can now pick up this pawn on a6 and uh, win the game having this uh, passed pawn on a5. So Fat Fritz's win was decided by a one move blunder by Lila, but nevertheless blunders are part of the game and a win is a win, as they say. And let's see now game 90 played between Lila and uh, Fat Fritz. Lila is white. Uh, the time control is 5 minutes with 5 second increments, so we have blitzes in this match. And the game started with c4, so we have an English opening e6, g3, d5, bishop g2, bishop e7, queen c2, castles, castles, c6, d4, b6, and now after knight d2 and bishop b7, we have e4. And this is now the end of the book. 
they both evaluate the position as completely equal. And in this position now we have knight a6. This is pretty much the main move. Black wants to get in c5. Lila played here a3. And now we have c5. E takes on d5. E takes on d5. D takes on c5. Knight takes. And now b4 pushing the knight away. And here the main move is actually knight e6. It was played by many, many grandmasters. But in this one, both Lila and Fat Fritz actually consider the knight e4 is the, the better option. And now we have knight takes, knight takes, and now knight d2. Taking now this knight on d2 is not that great because of the queen takes. This pawn is pinned to this bishop and uh, white can win this pawn now by taking on d5. There's nothing black can do here to, to save the pawn. So instead we have bishop f6 hitting the rook, bishop b2, rook c8, and now bishop takes, knight takes, and rook c1. And the pawn is uh, still pinned. So we have bishop a6, not only on pinning, but now pinning the c4 pawn against this rook. We have queen a4, and in this position, fat fritz now wins this pawn on c4. We have knight takes, pawn takes, and fat fritz has this uh, passed pawn here, but Lila now took on a7, and she can also maybe create a passed pawn by pushing the a pawn. Playing b5 here to protect this passed pawn is not so great because then Lila can play a4. And after something like rook c7 hitting the queen, the queen can just go to a5. And after b takes on a4, Lila could play b5. And her passed pawn would be much more dangerous than the black pawns since uh, that pawn would be also supported by this bishop. Once this pawn gets to b7, it is very, very dangerous. So instead of uh, b5, Fat Fritz played here knight g4, and now we have queen a4, and after knight e5, queen b5 hitting the knight and both pawns. We have queen f6 defending the knight, h3, and now c3. Fat Fritz decided to push this pawn forward. We have now rook e1, knight c4, a4, knight d2, and now a5, and it looks like Lila will create a passed pawn herself. We have pawn takes, pawn takes. And now knight f3 check, Lila has to give up the bishop, queen takes on f3, and now after rook e3 and queen f6, we have king g2. And in this position, Lila was expecting here h6, with a pretty much drawn position, because after rook f3 hitting the queen, the queen can go to d4, still protect this pawn. And if now queen b3 hitting this pawn for the third time, then Fat Fritz could play rook c5 and attack the a pawn. And of course, if they exchange these uh, passed pawns, then the game uh, is pretty much equal and probably will end in a draw. Here, the game could continue with a6, but now after rook a5, it's hard to defend this pawn. After queen b7, uh, Fat Fritz could play queen c4 and attack this pawn again. And after a7, just play queen a6. And after they exchange the queens, there's nothing to do, the pawns will be exchanged. And the game will end in a draw after rook takes here and rook takes on a7. This is a completely equal position with very little chances to create any advantage. But instead of h6, here Fat Fritz played c2. So he pushed the pawn forward. And now after rook e2, he played queen c3 to defend this pawn. And here Fat Fritz was expecting a6. And then he thought he will draw with queen c6 check, queen takes rook takes and now a7 and after rook c7 again it looks like they will exchange their pawns and the game will end again in a draw so this is what fat fritz was expecting but at this point lila already has a winning game here instead of queen c3 it looks like queen d4 was uh, absolutely needed here to prevent the loss of this pawn because if uh, white takes now here then after queen e4 check White loses a piece and with that the game. So instead of queen d4 we have queen c3 and in this position Lila now managed to create an imbalance which would uh, give her pretty good winning chances. She decided to give up these rooks for the queen and the pawn and try to use the a pawn to create some advantage. Stockfish at this point was already screaming a winning advantage for White Lila was more reserved. She evaluated this at only plus 0.7. So Lila took on c2, and now we have queen takes, rook takes, and now rook takes on c2. And usually two rooks are slightly stronger than a queen, 
but as we will see Lila will use the a pawn to to keep these rooks inactive she played here a6 and now we have rook c7 and now queen b6 threatening to push a7 we have rook e7 and now a7 rook a8 and now after queen b8 check hitting the rook Fat Fritz has uh, nothing better to do than to retreat the rook and defend the other one. Now we have queen b7 and as we can see these rooks are pretty much forced to stay on the back rank and prevent this pawn from uh, promoting. Now Lila has a winning game here but not because her pawn will uh, promote because that will never happen with these rooks on the back rank. However with the rooks being so inactive Lila has a chance to move up with the king and with these pawns and uh, try to create some kind of mating net around the black king we have a6 and now g4 rook c8 king g3 rook d8 king h4 rook f8 and now g5 intending to create a weakness here on h6 we have pawn takes king takes and now rook c8 h4 and in this position fat fritz could give some checks but after king g4, rook c4 and f4, the rook is pretty much forced back. Otherwise, this pawn promotes. And uh, fat fritz wouldn't be making any progress anyway. Instead of rook c5 check, we have king h7. And now queen e4 check, king g8 and h5. Intending to play h6 and uh, weaken the king. We have rook c5 check, king h4. And now after rook back, we have h6. A very, very good move weakening the black king's structure and if black takes then the pawn can go to f6 and then lila could uh, threaten mate maybe on g7 if black plays g6 here then after uh, queen d4 it's all over lila would be threatening mate on g7 and uh, f6 doesn't help because of queen d7 again threatening mate here and rook f7 of course is not possible because then fat Fritz would lose the rook on c8 so g6 is out of the question, Fat Fritz actually took on h6, and now we have king h5, planning to pick this pawn up, but we have rook e8 hitting the queen, queen g4 check, king f8, taking this pawn now on h6 wouldn't be so great, because of king e7, and this king now gets active, and gets out of the mating net, and everything would be so much harder. Instead of king h6, we have queen b4 check, forcing the king back, and then queen d4 check, king f8, and now after queen d6 check, of course if the king comes here, then this pawn would be lost with check. So we have king g8, and in this position, again, Lila has to be careful not to pick up that pawn, taking with the king, of course, runs into rook e6 check, and black would win. So taking the king is not good, but taking the queen is also not good, because it would drop the win, because of rook c5 check, and uh, the rooks get too active here and uh, fat fritz would get a lot of uh, counterplay so instead of queen takes on h6 and king takes on h6 first we have f4 and in this position rook e6 might be tempting to defend this pawn but after queen a3 this rook is pretty much forced back otherwise this pawn promotes rook a8 wouldn't help here because of f5 and no matter where this king goes, black is in trouble. If it goes to b6, then queen a2 is uh, lights out, threatening queen g2 check, picking up this rook. And if king f8, then queen d5 is strong, again, hitting this rook. And this one can go back to help. So this would be a win. If instead of uh, rook b6, the rook goes to c6, then Lila would win with queen f3, hitting both of these rooks. And after rook back to c8, f6. And again, there are all sorts of uh, mating threats. For example, if king f8, then queen b7 is very strong. And after king g8, the king can take this pawn on h6. And if now the king goes to h8, then queen e4 uh, threatens mating 1. And if the king goes to f8, then after king h7, Lila would be threatening mating 1 here. After rook e8, black would get mated. After queen b4 check, and then queen takes on e7. So as we can see, rook e6 is not good. Instead, fat fritz played rook a8, and now we have queen d7, rook d8, queen b7, king g7 to defend the pawn, and now queen c6, threatening to take here again with check. 
Rook a7 here would lose after queen h6 check and then queen g5 check picking up the other rook. So the pawn is immune. Instead we have rook c8 but now comes queen a6 check, king g8, queen b6 defending the pawn, rook e8 and now f5. And once this pawn gets to f6 the game will be over. We have rook e7 now, queen b8 check again, rook back, queen b7. And now after king g7 we have king g5 threatening f6. We have rook g8, f6 check. And now of course if the king goes to f8 then uh, he gets mated after king f5 and uh, mate threat again here on e7. Rook e8 again would just prolong the mate one more move. So instead of king f8 we have king h8 but now after king f5 Lila is threatening mate in one here and there's nothing fat Fritz can do here. Rook g6 maybe would be great but then that drops the other rook. We have rook f8 making room to this king. And here now Lila could just win by playing queen g2 with a mating one threat on g7. And rook g8 doesn't help of course because of queen h1 mate. But instead of queen g2 Lila chose to play king f4 allowing fat Fritz to prolong the game a bit. Now as far as I know in the new version of the Lila engine version 23 this is fixed so from now on if Lila will see a short path to mate the opponent then Lila will follow it. So I'm curious to see how that fixes things. So here Fat Fritz could prolong the game with moves like rook c8 and then checks and stuff but instead he allowed Lila to mate in two now with king g8. We have queen g2 check and then mate on g7. A very very nice game by Lila. And also a pretty good performance I would say for Fat Fritz. This is still work in progress so he can become a lot stronger in the future. In the end I would like to thank to Andrei Kovalenko for his $20 donation to my channel. And I would like to also thank of course to René, Adolf, Pavel and everyone else who donated to my channel. Visit the store and check out two of my other videos on the right. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and share and see you soon. Bye bye.